Hello dear, guess what, we have something great for you. Now, every Thursday, we're going to start a very new conversation and it's going to be questions and answers with Pastor Tosin. So, we're going to be bringing answers to your questions on this program. We're going to be answering biblical questions, we're going to be answering spiritual questions, those troubling questions, gray area questions that nobody has really ever given you like a clarity on those things. We are going to be doing that in this program. All right, now, we go on to our next question. And the question is, why is it hard for rich people to make heaven? Quite funny. I don't know why you think it's hard for, for rich people to make heaven. Do you think it's easy for poor people to make heaven too? <laughs> Let's look at... Now, I'm going to show you um, something that is going to interest you. Side by side, we're going to see two rich men in the scripture. And let's see their approach to how they saw their wealth in the scripture. Let's look at Luke chapter 18. I'll begin from verse 18. The Bible says, Now you were Jesus interacting with a rich man. Now hear the conversation going on here. But says, Now a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. You know, when the guy came to Jesus, he did not reference him as Lord. He called him good teacher, good rabbi. And Jesus said, why will you call me good? He says, basically he's telling him, you either see me as God or forget it because I'm more than good. Because I'm God. You know, and Jesus said, no one is good except God. He says, you know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor your father and mother. And he said, all these things I have kept from my youth. So the guy was an expert in keeping the Ten Commandments. So when Jesus had these things, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Okay? But I kept all the Ten Commandments. How come I still lack one thing? Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor. And you will have treasures in heaven. I come and follow me. So, you can see that Jesus is bringing his attention to something. All the while, while he was keeping the Ten Commandments, all the while, while he was using his riches for whatever, the focus has never been about Jesus. It's all been about himself. You see? So, Jesus is telling him, the reason why Jesus is telling him is that Jesus knew that this, this guy has an, an attachment to money. He loves money. And that's the problem. Money has become his master. So, Jesus already gave him a bet choose money or choose me and of course 23 says but when he heard this you know jesus heard what he said now he's hearing what jesus said he says he became very sorrowful he became very if in fact the Greek word is exceedingly sorrowful exceedingly sorrowful grieved all around that's the word he was tensely sad that's the word for he was very rich the, the Bible tells us that he will, the guy was very... That means he, he was wealthy. He abounded in material resources. That's the word there. You know? So, why couldn't he sell his properties? Why couldn't he sell all that he had? There was a reason and a purpose for this. Now, you know, when Jesus... 24. When Jesus was... Sorry. When, uh, when Jesus saw that he became very sorrowful, he said... How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And those who heard it said, Who then can be saved? But he said, These things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Then Peter said, See what we have left. He says, See, see, we have left all and followed you. That means Peter um will also have some level of riches he says left everything left all his resources left all his business and followed jesus jesus said to him as shortly i said to you there's no one who has left houses or parents or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom of god he says who shall not receive many times more in this present time and in the age to come eternal life now Notice, we are in Luke 18. Jesus talked, we just saw one rich man's reaction to Jesus. Right? 
Now let's see another rich man. In Luke, like just the next chapter, Luke 19. See, God put two rich men side by side so we can learn something from these two rich men. Something we can learn. Our oh, going there. Verse 19. It's already chapter 19 from verse 1. Bible says, Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and he was rich. Notice, he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, but he couldn't because of the crowd. For he was a sh of short status. That means the guy was like almost like a dwarf, very short. You know? So he ran ahead and climbed up on a sycamore tree to see him. For he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste, I come down. For today I must stay at your house. Now Zacchaeus is a rich man. So we follow this story very carefully. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Now notice, the first rich man was not a sinner based on his own credentials. You know, he kept the Ten Commandments. He wasn't a sinner. He didn't break any, any commandments. So he was a very righteous guy and he was ready to get eternal life. Zacchaeus, on the other hand, was a rich man, but he saw himself as a sinner because yet, he just encountering Jesus. Now, how did Zacchaeus deal with what he had? Look at this, verse 8. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore for food. Do you know what that means? Zacchaeus is saying that if I took from somebody um, a million naira, I'm giving them back four million. Notice the other guy, Jesus says, sell all you had, I follow me. Bible says he went away sorrowful. Zacchaeus said he will give four times. He will give half of everything away to the poor. Now, what did Jesus say to him? Jesus says, today salvation has come to this house because he is also a son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save that which of lost. Now the question is, who asked Zacchaeus to sell what he had and give half to the poor? Who asked Zacchaeus to give back four times what he owed? Nobody. So how did Zacchaeus come to that reaction? It's because of what grace can do. You see, what the Lord could not do, grace did in the life of Zacchaeus. When Jesus came to his house, Jesus loved him. Jesus came to his house, ate in his house. The Pharisees were angry. People were angry. Like, How can you go to a sinner's house? But guess what? As Jesus was ministering and teaching him the gospel, he, 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 from that point in his life, he stopped putting his trust in riches and put his trust in Jesus. And because of the revelation of Christ to him, he thought to himself that it is better for him to ensure that his riches go into the kingdom of God than to go to himself. That's the reason why he stood up and said, you know what? I'm going to give half of what I have to the poor. And Jesus didn't say, I know if you do this one, he still has for you. Jesus didn't say that. What did Jesus, what Jesus didn't tell us? The other guy saw himself righteous. He was a self-righteous person. He put so much trust in his riches than in the living God. Now, what does the Bible tell the rich people in the New Testament today? Look at, um, um, let me show you something else. Let's look at First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6. It says, Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty. That means don't be proud. Nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. So the Bible is saying very carefully, very clearly, that it is, there's nothing wrong with being rich. But the question is, do you trust in your riches? Or do you trust in the living God? Because there's a level of um, independence you can have when you have a lot of money, right? For instance, if you check most of the prayers of many Christians, it's about God giving them something. You know, Father, give me, Father, give me, give me this, give me that, because they don't understand what prayer really is. So the question is, if you have the money to solve all your needs, to solve all your problems, with there still be prayer in your life? That's the real question. Because it now shows where your heart really is. Whether your heart is in your riches or whether your heart is in the living God. Now, how do you ensure your heart is in the living God? Look at verse 8. It says, let them do good. That, and that they be rich in good, in, in good works. It says, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold to eternal life. The, the same thing that Jesus told that rich guy. 
He says, sell everything you have and give to the poor. He couldn't do it. Jesus said, if you have done that, you will leave for yourself riches unto eternal life. But he missed it. So the Bible says, if you want to ensure that you inherit the kingdom of God as a rich person, you have to ensure that you do good, that you are rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, and storing up. Because when you do these things, you are storing up for yourself a good foundation for the time to come. That's how to, 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 to live your life as a rich person in this present age. You see, but if, if you let greed take a hold of you, you'll be like that rich fool that Jesus said to him today, come home. You know, so when God blesses you abundantly, when God increases you, always ensure that you are a generous person from your heart. You are a generous person. You are generous to the house of God. You are generous to the poor. You are generous to your family. You are generous to people around you. Don't let greed take a hold of you because um, generosity is a habit you must develop because when you when you let greed take your hold of your heart you cannot inherit the kingdom of God that's what the Bible says that's what Jesus said Jesus said you can't even see it you can't see the kingdom of God now it's not talking about salvation by the way it's talking about the kingdom of God maybe one day I'm going to answer the difference between salvation and kingdom of God so maybe you can understand this very carefully you'll be saved but God's not going to really reward you because 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 listen I never forget this any money you keep you lose any money you give, you keep. Because any money you give to the kingdom of God is storing up it is storing up for yourself a solid foundation in the life to come. Unto eternal life, the Bible tells us. Because remember, money is mammal. Money, money is temporal. Money can only be used in this world. But you can convert that your money to something eternal. And the only way to make that happen is to be a generous person. That's the only way. You must learn to give. You must practice it. That's the only way to, to, to live on top in the kingdom of God. You must be a generous person. You must learn to give to the work of God, give to the kingdom of God, give from your resources to the house of God. Are you seeing that? And give to those around you, those, those that are in need that you can help. Perhaps they will be willing to share. Be willing to share. Why? Because you know that it's your heavenly father that has blessed you with what you have. It's your heavenly father that has blessed you with his riches. He's the one that has empowered you and given you such a level of prosperity. So therefore, he has, you are, you are now his agent of change in this present age. That's how to ensure that you would inherit God's kingdom. If you live your life this way, you will prosper and make progress in your life. God bless you.